Well hi folks and welcome to part two of your Hogwarts uh, painting tutorial. If you checked out part one you will have seen how we laid all the bases in. In part two what we're going to show you is actually how to change the sky, brighten it up, add another layer in and we're going to begin layering and hopefully finish it in this tutorial. So come on in and let's begin. Questions I always get asked is John I've made a, a painting or a painted a painting I'm not happy with the sky, or I'm not happy with a certain part of this picture. Is there anything I can do to change it? And the answer is yes. Um, but people always are terrified, obviously, at this point of painting over anything because they don't want to feel like, oh my goodness, what do I do? Um, you know, I've, I've painted this, what happens if I make a mess of it? If you make a mess, you know, you just paint over it and, uh, you know, just, just work again. But I get it, you know, it, it takes a lot to actually paint over something that you spend so much time working on and, and developing and building. So, you know, but this is a, just a little tutorial for you. Um, in, in part one, I'll just tell you this guys, and then I'll get obviously on with painting a tutorial. Um, part one, this is what we actually call a repurposed canvas or a textured canvas. I was teaching about this last night. Now what a textured canvas is, all artists, unless they're absolute perfectionist, um, will have canvases that they've made and probably just sit there, never really do much apart from gather dust. <coughs> so what happens is they just sit there and, and there's no, no life to them or anything like that. Hey Linda, hoping you're doing good um, as well. So what I always advise is if you've got a painting that maybe you want to repurpose or you want to go over, go ahead and do it. You can do that, okay? The amount of young artists and old artists that have uh, come to me over the last year uh, since I've really, you know, opened up the art school and everything else that have said, oh, you know, well, I had this painting, didn't like it, so I threw it in the bin. Right, okay, and they, you know, some people had more money than cents. Uh, quite frankly, and they ended up spending a ton of cash on canvases. Um, thank you, Virginia. I really do appreciate that. How are you doing today, my dear? Um, and they basically, you know, ended up spending 70, 80, 90 quid on pounds, depending where you're watching this, um, on canvas and basically just threw it in the bin. And when I told them, you know, you, you can just paint over it and, you know, go again. Um, yeah, they, they were not particularly happy, so. But it's true, you can. And I, and I frequently tell students that now all the time. Um, but it is, it's one of these things, if you don't know, obviously, you're not gonna suddenly think of it. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do, we've got a little bit of, let's see, we've got a little bit of bright yellow, mix it in with a little bit of white, and all I'm gonna do with a little filbert brush is very carefully, and don't worry if you get some over the mountains, that's, you know, you can always paint these things back in. Um, you know, I, I do have a golden rule with a lot of our students, in fact with all of our students, you don't need to worry. And that's why I do these live streams, sometimes where I've made a deliberate mistake, um, you know, <laughs> deliberate. Um, but sometimes I will, sometimes I will literally just put something in there for, for the sake of, you know, getting a tutorial out of it. Um, because after all these years, you know what the paint does, you know what it doesn't do. And I very rarely sit there thinking, oh my goodness, I've made a mistake, I can't fix this. Um, but again, as I said, that takes time to get to that place. So, if you're just starting out, as I said, don't panic. You know, there are tons and tons of wonderful artists out there uh, that are all, hopefully, if they're good, they'll be willing to help and, uh, and, you know, and to teach you. That's how we all learn, is, is through other people teaching us, so. Sometimes just by trying it as well, so. Okay, so all we're doing now is just coming in with a little bit of red paint and just filling up the sky. Creating some lovely oranges. And because we're using a smaller brush, this is where you can get more intricate detail in so this guy, so what I'm doing is just keeping adding a little bit of red into my yellow. I haven't cleaned the brush at this point. I'm just letting it build up. Let me just weave it over here. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with 
my quarter inch brush, which if you were in class one, you'll know what it looks like. It's this little fella that's here. And all we're gonna do then is just to come in with a little bit more red. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, a little bit more red and a tiny touch of purple. Just to darken it down a little bit. Ooh, that's so it's like crimson. And I definitely encourage you, if, if you've never been out with the, the night sky before and you've never looked at a lot of this stuff, when you start painting, it changes your perspective on a lot of things. Um, and you start looking at things more and you start seeing things more. Okay, so we've got a little bit of blue that's going on there. We're going to come in with a little bit of purple now. Okay. If you feel that your purple is too dark, you can just add in a tiny touch of white. It just helps brighten things up. But I, I kind of like some of the darker colours because it's more, it's not only a pure colour, but more so than that, it's, I just think it's the richness of the colours. The richness of the colours and certainly over this end there'll be more. Now as we get further over here because it's away from the sun, it's away from the reaction of the light, what tends to happen is things tend to grey up a little bit, um, maybe not as colourful or as happy as they were before. But the further away something is from the light, the darker it's going to be. Okay and then we're just going to Just put these across, and again, because it is a transparent colour provided and you haven't used too much, you can literally just paint right across the building, just let the highlights in later on. Okay, clean brush, and then we're going to come in with the, we're going to dry it off in fact, and we'll use the same brush. And then just down under the reds, I'm just going to blend that on in. Just nicely. And you can see just the gorgeous colours. Now I know you're seeing me breaking my own rule here a little bit, because my golden rule here is that you never go from a dark colour into a light colour. I'm definitely not going into the yellows because I like that colour, I like that blend. But I just wanted to darken it down so it blends up a little bit more. Just in a tiny touch of red. Maybe a little bit more over here. And again, this is where you can just really create some beautiful separator lines and all these little things. Just going on here, just scrub a little bit of colour in. Okay, you're gonna come back in with a little filled up brush. A little bit more red, maybe a tiny touch of purple. Because it's starting to get away from the main part of the light now. Which obviously the lightest areas over here. And then just blend some of these colours on in. I don't know if folks are interested as well, but when we were watching Harry Potter um, this time around, this past weekend, um, Something really, really cool and yet really strange happened. Sometimes, and it's usually around this time of year, um, songs sort of come to me and they sort of just float around on the breeze. For those of you who don't know, I'm also a songwriter. Um, so we've got a sky um, and we've now got some really, really gorgeous colours that are going on here. Um, I will paint around the side of the canvas, but we're not worried about that just now for time. Okay, now, when you're painting in the water in particular, as we looked at in part one, the water always wants to be darker than what's above, unless it's a direct reflection. A direct reflection means that there's no mountains, there's no other subject matter there, it's literally sky to water. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so what we're gonna do now is come in with a little bit of red into a tiny touch of purple, in fact, scrap that little bit of red into a tiny touch of blue. And what that does is make up a lovely, lovely lavender colour. Okay. And then we're going to come in here. And we're just literally going to scrub 
from side to side into the canvas. Okay, just down here, and then we're going to add in a little bit of yellow, which hopefully should make it a nice orangey colour. The reason we're doing this is because the mountains obviously are here. The first part of your water is the mountains. The next part of your water will be the sky, so we're going to end up with something peachy. A little bit more yellow, just some shimmers on the water, wherever there's light. And again, you just keep blending and blending, just working these things in. Tiny touch of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a really powerful, powerful colour. Okay, a little bit more. There we go. Ooh, that's looking nice. And these are just little shimmers on the water. Just little shimmers. Okay, now what, what's next? Uh, next will be a dark orange. So a little bit of yellow into a little bit of red into a little touch of purple. Okay, and the main colours are going to be more in the middle because obviously that's where your light is. Over here you have subject matter, so that's obviously going to darken things down as well. Then we get down here, we do a little bit more phthalo blue which I'm going to touch in with a little bit of black, which is always fun. Grey and murky. And then just blend that on back. Yeah, something like that. And it's literally just that simple to start putting all of that in, all those lovely colours. And then we've already got a lot of dark area down here, which is fine. I'm just going to darken it up a little bit more. Tiny bit of water, a little bit of purple, and just grey up a little bit. Once it gets to this point in a sunset, you don't want it to be too bright. Okay, mixing in some blue, mixing, 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 and we're going to stop there because we don't want it's a mix into those colours that we've just made. Okay, right, from here, we're going to come in with a little bit of white and a tiny amount of grey. I'll try that again, a tiny amount of black to make grey. Okay. And then we're going to come in and we're going to touch up these mountains Okay, so your lightest side is going to be wherever, obviously, the light is clearest. We're going to add a little bit of yellow in to the green that we just made, because it's a yellowy sunset. A little bit more. And this week, you just play around with colours. Don't be afraid of them. It's one of the common things, actually, that uh, students can be really terrified of applying paint on the brush. We had that actually last night with one student um, and it is, it's, it's, it's almost like the dreaded curse because if you're afraid to put paint on your brush and on the canvas you are not going to get far. You're not going to get far. Okay so we're just putting in these little layers just over here and wherever the sunlight would hit that's where your brightest areas will be. And we teach all these things, of course, on our DVDs, available at johnmorrisatmahat.com. Shameless plug there, and I don't mind. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm just going to come in a little bit of the yellow, just keep mixing it on in, and just layering where the ground would be. Create some beautiful, beautiful misty effects by doing this technique. And that's it, that's all there is to it. I'm not doing anything that's you know too strenuous or too scary. Um, all we're doing is just adding in little bits of colour, and then all we're gonna do without cleaning the brush is to come in and on the other side just to create a little bit of a darker, maybe a little bit darker. 
Because where there's an absence of light, there will be darkness. Oh yes, that's deep. An absence of light causes darkness. Which is true. Okay, it's a little bit darker. The further on out we're going. Let's pull it around. And all we're doing, the best way that I can describe this to you is banana shapes. Okay, and we're, again, we do cover this in the Introduction to Painting DVD available at johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com forward slash shop. Um, so, <laughs> I'm terrible, aren't I? So, all we're going to do is literally just pull around. I call these banana shapes because it's the best way to get to think about it. You've got the banana, essentially the curve of the banana, and that is what you have here. You're just pulling round and round and round and round and round. Come into a little bit of water. And just do the same over here. Just pull and just darken it up. So wherever there's no or a little light, it's going to be quite dark. Quite dark indeed. Okay. And you can see the effects now on how that's really start to shape the land a little bit more and build it up and develop it further. Okay, final thing you guys are going to get to see today is we're going to start to touch up the castle a little bit more. So to do that, we're going to come in with a little bit of black paint. A little bit of black paint. Let's see what we've got, actually. I'm just debating which one to use. There's a couple of different brands that I use of black paint. I think I'll use uh, Reeves today. Okay, so a little bit of water. Okay, and then those areas where we've just coloured in, we're just going to come in and very lightly just touch up. Just touch up and build in some things here. And don't worry if you go over the lines or the lights, that's fine. That's fine. Now, I like some of this colour here. I don't know if you can see it too well. Let's zoom in for you guys. But over here, it creates... Going over the colour that we did right at the beginning, it creates somewhat of a misty effect, which actually pushes things right back into the distance, which is perfect for what we're about to do, because we've got quite a lot of paint on here, what I'm going to do is just take the brush and just begin scrubbing in some of that colour. Which brings the castle forward and it keeps this in the distance. Okay guys, now that Facebook have uh, logged off, we're going to continue our little painting here. I hope you're enjoying this uh, and even maybe giving it a go as well. We always love to see and hear some of the uh, awesome comments that you guys fire in. Okay, there we go. Right. So, from here, we're going to start curving this bridge around a little bit more. And what you want to do is to take a little uh, liner brush into a little bit of water or turpentine, whatever it is that you're using to wet your or to clean your brushes. And then all I'm going to do again banana shapes, just curve this line around. Okay, and again, we're going to thicken it so it's going to come all the way around. Around, 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 around. And down. Did you know that just as a as a random thing that the scenes where Harry Potter was filmed in Scotland, there is the Jacobite Bridge. I think it's in Glenfinnan or Fidden. Um, I'm going to get lots of people, I'm sure, commenting uh, on the pronunciation of that. Anyway, but basically there were, gosh, I don't know how many people nearly killed uh, trying to get back to the locations of where Harry Potter actually was filmed. Uh, so my advice is if you're in Scotland and you go on this trip, do not 
try to get on the train tracks um, and walk back. It is it's not advisable. Anyway, so we have this little bridge that's coming up here. Just work this in. We could also incorporate, I suppose, the Whomping Willow somewhere. I know technically it's not in the area that we'll be painting it, but it might be fun. Uh, what can you see? Uh, I tell you what, actually, we could put it down here. We could put it down here. Okay, okay, right. Here we go. So you're going to take a... <laughs> Don't you just love painting with me? It's all good fun. Okay. You're going to take a little... Uh, what we got? We've got a filbert brush. Okay, and it looks like this. It's a little square handled or square headed brush a little bit of black on one side a little bit of yellow ochre on the other and let's see let's stick the whomping willow just debating where to place it how close i want him uh right in the school grounds he's on a hill so we could place him roughly around here Just to make it almost more authentic and just different ideas. Okay, so you've just got two bananas that are going to come down. Okay, colour them in. And then all you're going to do, you know, decide the time of year. Yeah, we'll have this as summertime because it's quite nice, nice sunset. Okay, and then we're just going to take a, a round head brush and you're just going to tap in where your foliage would be okay just something like that and then this time I'm just literally pulling some of the leaves down okay and then we can take a little debate yeah little liner brush touch of water and we can create some of these gnarly things that the Whomping Willow has. Line a brush into some black. And I know it's not exact, but it's just, you know, just, just playing around with ideas and, and some fun. And that's okay. We could even put Hagrid's little hut maybe up here. Now the hook tends to face up that way, so just have it down here, just paint it black. For our purposes, I think I might have the door, let's see, now currently that's facing away from us. Let's pop it in, so yes, yeah, so it's, it's almost like hybrid is looking outwards. And just pull some of these things on in. Okay, big black door. I'm going to take a little bit of that grey yellowy colour we made earlier on. Just down the left side. Create some of these little things. Little bricks, little rocks and things. I mean, for copyright purposes, you have to be careful. But for fun art and for tutorial, I think we should be okay. Okay, we know what it is. We know what it is. Okay, right, what I want to do now is to come in with a little fan brush. Now this, believe it or not, is a very old, stiff fan brush. Um, this, I think, is one of my first fan brushes that I ever used, and it still works good today, even though it's uh, very old and uh, very stuck together. Okay, so we're going to come in just with pure black, and all I'm going to do is just literally lift up. Just lift up. Just lift up, and this is another way to do a lot of little trees really, really quickly. Okay, and all you do is just 
touching and lifting. It's the same way we actually do grass. Just obviously which are with a, a much smaller brush. When we get down here, the trees will be much bigger. Now these actually would be much darker now because the light is hitting them, which causes them actually to be darker. Okay, when we get to the bigger trees down this side, all you need to do, same technique, just make them bigger. The smaller something seems, the further away it appears. So my advice is don't go paint something that's too big if it's meant to be miles away from you. Okay, we can lead into the forest, the Hagrids. Uh, yeah, we'll put trees. Yeah, I was going to do uh, a few more defined trees, but I think for now we'll just use the same technique. Let's grab those in. And now you can see how that actually makes Hagrid's home look a little bit more defined. Okay, what we're going to do now is to come in with a little bit of green, with a little round head brush, a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow. And we're just going to put some more definition on this little tree over here. And all I'm going to do is just touch. More green. I'm using a very powerful yellow, so okay. And because it's night time, it doesn't need to be too bright. Just to put a little bit of highlight on over here. Final couple of stages, guys. Okay, I want you to come in with a little quarter inch brush. Okay, I want you to come in with that little quarter inch brush into some of that green. Maybe a tiny touch of water. And then, just in the odd places, a tiny touch of black perhaps as well, because we do not want this to be too bright. Just a little bit of highlight, even a little bit more black. Maybe it should get darker the further away from the light it gets. Okay, and I'm just going to pull, gently pull on down because again it's really far away. We do not want too much definition, otherwise it kills the illusion of depth. Yeah, just something like that. Maybe a couple of little fishing posts. Just a few down here. Need to be anything too elaborate, maybe even a little bit. We won't put the boat house in. But a little reflection, just like that. Okay. The final thing that we need to do is just to put this landmass back in as it was. And this is a really exciting opportunity to use the big brush. All we're going to do is just come in, cover it with black paint. Just like that. Now all we're going to do is just touch and lift. Okay. 
Just touch and lift.
different directions, places and sizes. And when it's all dry, we can touch up that tree, add the final detail in, so it's not too bright. And that's all key here, is to keep the illusion. Is that it needs to be quite dark. tutorial like this, you get the rough idea. Okay, painting some pumpkins for for Hagrid. Dear Hagrid, okay, a little bit of black, put some finer detail onto that. And I think we have just about a finished painting here folks. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been my honour and pleasure as always to get to present this to you. I absolutely love doing this every single week guys, um, whether it be on, obviously on YouTube or on Facebook or wherever we are. Thank you as always for watching. Um, please if you would be good enough and you want to hear more from us, hints, tips, special offers or just to see more of the artwork and awesome content, head to johnmorrisartfromtheheart.com where you can check out all our latest stuff, our DVDs, of course, and so many other things. Until next time, guys, take care. God bless. Have an awesome week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. Take care.